The Flotsam Ninjas are a faction of warriors, mainly constituted of women escaping the totalitarian misogyny of the Holy Nation. Their base in the Hidden Forest acts as a home for refugees of the Holy Nation, as well as to a number of unique recruits, whose stories give hints into the varied rejections and interpretations of Ocranism held by the faction, and their safe house to the north of Rebirth can stave off death for escaped slaves. Scorchlander Moll is the leader of the Flotsam Ninjas, and can be found in the Flotsam Village. Nowhere in this world is safe. People are either trying to burn us at the stake, or they're trying to eat us alive. But at least the cannibals are good for one thing. Target practice. The Holy Nation has a bounty on her, which describes her as an agent of Narco, the evil god in their religion, which stands in opposition to Okran, for which the Okranites are named. For context, it's important to understand just how oppressive the Holy Nation is towards women. Not only does their entire religion see women as inherently evil, but they're not even allowed to go outside alone, and virtually every mishap that befalls the nation is blamed on their, quote, temptations. Talking to Moll about this reveals something about the philosophy of the Flotsam Ninjas. Ha! A cult of narco? I guess you've been reading too much Holy Nation bullcrap, huh? There are hundreds of possible interpretations of a single religion. The Holy Nation is just one of many. They only see black and white. Some of us are just unfortunate enough to be born evil in their eyes. Some of us take that status a step further by fighting these ignorant labels. I could go off on a rant about religion, but I won't bore you. Of course, this is a lore channel. Most of my ninjas, the ones that escape the Holy Lands, still practice Ocranism, but a different school of it. One where there is no good or evil, just birth and death. If you believe in narco, check our outpost for scripts. You'll see there's no right view, only one of many possible views. But of course myself, well I think it's all garbage. The scripture I believe she is referring to is the Book of Sacrifice. Here is an extract from it. Together, two gods would exist in equilibrium. Okran, god of day, warmth and renewal. Narco, god of night, cold and destruction. And from that day forth it was known, the Great Father's sacrifice must not be in vain. The gods must be given strength, the cycle of death and rebirth preserved. As we can see, this scripture doesn't characterise Okran and Narco as the good god and the bad god, but two necessary sides of a single whole, a kind of Taoist conceptualization of these deities and their relationship. But before you assume this is a revisionist Flotsam Ninja interpretation of the scriptures, you should know that the Book of Sacrifice can be found inside the temples of the Holy Nation itself, though it is a forbidden book, clearly not for the eyes of the average citizen. The question of whether the Book of Sacrifice predates the scriptures of Radiance, written by the First Phoenix and which lays out the anti-narco-misogynistic interpretation of the splitting of Chitron, is an open one. I could talk all day about the ideology of the Holy Nation, and I've wanted to make a video about it for a while, but handling it how I want to sensitively is beyond my current skill as a writer of video scripts. So in the meantime, if you want to learn more about the Holy Nation and Ocranism, check out All One's video on the subject, which I'll link in the description. Beyond the religious, more of Mole in particular's worldview can be found in her notes. Some of the Flotsam Rebels make up some of the best ninjas in the world, hands down. The Holy Nation are fools for not utilising the skill of these women. A society that denies half of its potential will eventually fall. And is it not right for a slave to use any means necessary to be free? Then let us do what we must to throw off our shackles. Because words and reason will not create change, it is our responsibility, for the sake of every woman who lived, lives, and will live, that we impose that change with blood and iron if it needs be. In short, the Holy Nation's views are not only ethically bankrupt, but illogical too. The Flotsam Ninja have no particular qualm with men, even if they are suspicious of male Greenlanders around their camp, but if you stand in the way of their mission of liberation, they will not hesitate to deal with you accordingly. There are a number of unique recruits available in the Flotsam Ninja, and talking to them will give you an idea of the ideological plurality of the Flotsam Ninjas. A truly broad church existing in opposition to the authoritarian Holy Nation. Rhea, for example, will not be recruited by any male Greenlander. I am, but not for you, Traveller. I serve no man. I served men long enough when I was living in the Holy Lands. Knife, on the other hand, has a more relaxed attitude. Ha! Me? I've travelled long enough since leaving Stack to know that no man or woman is trustworthy. But I'm looking to travel again. Are you hiring? Both Reaver and Digna, another unique recruit, will verbally attack Griffin, an ex-Holy Nation soldier recruit, if you have him in a party with them. 
I said in another video that the Flotsam Ninja were played by misandry, but after researching them more thoroughly, I'd like to retract that claim. The Flotsam Ninja stand in opposition to the patriarchal tyranny of the Holy Nation, and though individual members may harbour prejudices, there is no policy, no strictly adhered to ideology of misandry. Indeed, their second in command is a man. The real world parallels are clear to see. Movements of liberation appearing on the surface through the lens of the propaganda we are fed by the ruling ideology to be merely a negative print of the systems they are opposing, but if you look a little deeper, you find that the goal is the emancipation of all people. Like Mole says, how can even the male Greenlander citizens of the holy nation thrive when half the population's ideas are completely disregarded? Thank you for watching this slightly heavier episode of Kenshi Faction Law. It's definitely been the most enlightening video to research, and I hope it will put me on steadier ground to talk more about the Holy Nation itself in the future. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking it and subscribing. Also, please let me know what you think about the ideas discussed here in the comments, but please, in Okran's name, keep it civil. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.